How are you for today is Monday the 1st of March and um, today we're going to be looking at time. So your learning question for today is can I develop an understanding of time? Okay. So just to warm you up, um, very similar activity to the one that you did the other day when you were looking at time. Just to have a go at completing these statements, so just getting you used to your multiplication again. So one day is the same as 24 hours. If one times 24 is 24, what's two times 24 going to be? Okay, and so on and so forth. So you're doing conversion from days into hours or hours into days. Um, and you're just going to fill in the blanks to complete the statements. Okay. OK, so we're just going to quickly recap, revisit um, a clock face um, and just revise um, what the different hands mean and what is meant by the terminology quarter of an hour, half of an hour, three quarters of an hour or what, um, one hour. OK, so you have a large hand and a small hand. Now, we don't use the words large hand and small hand. When we tell the time, we use the words and phrases minute hand and hour hand. OK, so minute hand is the longer of the two hands on, the, on your clock face. And that tells you how many minutes to the hour um, the clock is pointing to. OK, and then your hour hand is the small one and it points to the different numbers as it goes around. Um, and it tells you what time it's on, OK, and that moves a lot slower than the minute hand. The mi minute hand moves a lot quicker. OK, so that one's always moving, the minute hand is. So at the moment, the clock is telling me that it's two o'clock. OK, and that's because the hour hand is pointing to the two and the minute hand is pointing to the 12. OK, now when it points to the 12, it means that a full 60 minutes has gone by and it's now moving on to the next hour. OK. Um, you will know that in my classroom I have um, labels that go around my clock that tell you the time <clears throat> so you can see what hand is pointing to which part of the clock and you can read what time it says um, when you look at my clock on the wall. But on this poster it's got um, four images and some phrases that I'm just going to very quickly explain the meaning of them um, to you. So the first one shows what looks like a slice so a quarter of um, the clock because if you think about it it's a circle when you split a circle into half and half again you get quarters so that's where we get the quarter um of an hour phrase from that whole like cutting the um clock face in half and half again so a quarter of an hour means that 15 minutes has, have, have gone by because when you look at your clock faces in more detail um, a lot of them have little lines going around them and the minutes go in fives. So from 12 to 1, the numbers on the clock, it would be five minutes. Then 1 to 2 would be 10 minutes and then 2 to 3 would be 15. We know that a quarter um, of 60 is 15. OK, so that's where we get quarter of an hour from. So 15 minutes has gone past um, on the clock. And then... Another 15 minutes would take you to a half, which is the same as 30, because we know that 60 is a half of 60 is, is 30, isn't it? So that means 30 minutes has gone past. And then we have our three quarters or 45 minutes. And um, that, again, is just um, three over four. We know that's equivalent to 45. OK. Um, and then you've got one hour and that's a full hour, which is the same as 60 minutes. OK, so when when you come to tell the time, it's really good to practice using that terminology just so you get used to it. OK, now I do recommend that you either take a photo um, or a screenshot um, if you're on a tablet of this of this um, video uh, clip here, this particular slide. Um, to help you when you come to answer the questions. So if you've watched the video through to then go back to this bit and pause it so you can see the poster um, because it'll be quite useful for you because you do have to draw time on some clock faces later on. OK, now, if you are struggling with time, 
that's fine. Um, we will be looking at it again tomorrow, so don't worry about it. Okay, so um, question one, you have a table and all you have to do is fill the gaps in the table. Okay, so you've got the way that you would write the time out as a sentence. You've got it in hours, so people that perhaps um, work in um, the police force, the army, the navy, would say it's 800 hours, it's 0800 hours or it's 1200 hours. So um, that second grid is almost very similar to the way that people that work in those types of roles would say what time it is when they're collecting evidence or um, referring to the time to people on their team that they're working with. And then your last one is going to be um, a digital version of time. So this is what you would see on a digital clock or if you had a digital watch face. So Miss Prince's watch is a clock. So you can see there, but you then, when you tap on it, if I can get to um, there, it also tells you what time it is. So that's the digital time then, the one that was in writing and numbers, and then that's your analog. Okay. And um, what happens is, you have your analog and then you have your digital so your analog is perhaps what you would write um in a long sentence and then your digital would be the one that you would write um 8 a.m or 13 okay so just be mindful of how you write it so the first one's already been done for you and it says eight o'clock in the morning and it says oh eight hundred hours or eight and then eight a.m so for the second one, it says 17 minutes past three in the afternoon. Now, if I know it's in the afternoon, I can't put that it's three o'clock because when you get to 12 o'clock at dinner time, it then goes on to 13 because it works in 24 hours. So it would go 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now, it won't say 24. It'll have all zeros. So when... It resets, it goes back to zero, and then it'll start at one again. So for this one here, I would be writing, because I know that three o'clock on the clock face of the afternoon is 15. So it'd be 15, 17 hours, okay? And then you would do the same um, in the table, in the column on the last bit of the table as well, okay? So just make sure that you are paying attention. Um, now I know it is a little bit confusing, so I suggest that you perhaps get a clock face up or like I say, go back to um, the slide that we were on just to help you, okay? Because um, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes to understand time. So your job is to then finish off this table by filling in all the blank gaps, you might need to write some sentences that tell me what the time is saying, or you might have to fill it in with the numbers and tell me whether it's a.m. or p.m. So a.m. is the morning and p.m. is the evening and the afternoon. OK. So for question two, you have got some clock faces. Now, it's asking you to draw the times from question one on the clock faces. So remembering your minute hand and your hour hand and the sizes of them. So your minute hand is the longer hand and your hour hand is the smaller hand. So if you look at it like that, that would be my minute hand, that would be my hour hand. Okay. And when it moves, it'll slowly move with it. Okay. So First thing that I recommend that you would do for this question is to check your answers from question one. Now, the only reason why I would do this is because it's written differently. So I would just check through your answers to make sure that you've written it all out correctly, that, they all, that they're all the same, that they all match. And then I would mark the clock face um, on the clock face, the times very carefully as well. So I would keep in mind my minute hand and my hour hand and the size of them 
because you don't want to draw them the same size because then I would get confused and you would get confused as to what time it is that you're showing me okay and then for your final step so step three I would like for you to check over your answers and check that they match the times that you had in question one and I want you to double check the sizes of your clock hands and when you check your answers I want you to have a go at reading the time because if you're struggling to read the time it might mean that you need more practice but it might also mean that you've drawn the size of your clock hands wrong okay so just want you to take your time double check go over it make sure that you feel 100% confident um, with your answers before you move on okay number three is your um, word problem question so it's asking you to complete the word problems step one I would read that answer very carefully so uh, read the answer read the question very carefully I am ever so sorry I've typed it out wrong there so read the question carefully so it says Sophie spent 36 minutes each day Monday to Friday on her homework how many hours is this in total so I've read my question read it slowly I'm then going to move on to step two where I pick out my keywords so Sophie spent 36 minutes each day Monday to Friday on her homework how many hours is this in total so I know that she spends 36 minutes each day now I know she does it Monday to Friday so I go Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday right so that's five days now I need to work out the number of hours so then I go on to step three and I work out the answer using my keywords so Sophie spent 36 minutes each day Monday to Friday on her homework how many hours is this in total so I know that Monday to Friday is the same as five days this means I would have to multiply 36 so the minutes by the number of days which is five to get my answer so I'd work out my answer I know it's 180 but I would then go on to step four because I would want to make sure that I'm confident in my answer so I do 36 times by 5 which would equal 180 so I would go online if I can't um, use a calculator at home if you've got a phone I would use that to help you because um, you can get calculators on your phone type in calculator on your iPad to help you just to make sure that you feel confident when you come to check over your answers okay so hopefully you will have had a really good go of your um, three questions for today and then you're going to want to move on to your challenge um, and your challenge is to complete this table so you have the numbers of day, number of days and number of weeks so we all know that there are seven days in one week so how many days are going to be in five weeks and how many days are going to be in 12 weeks you also have the number of days that needs converting to the number of weeks so if there are 49 days what can you divide that by to work out how many weeks it's equivalent to okay so we're going to be using our multiplication and division for this challenge just to keep building that fluency and to keep practicing just to make sure that we're confident with our numbers and just a quick reflection for today right at your understanding of time do you feel confident are you a little bit iffy or are you really really uncertain and you need some more help i would really appreciate it if you let me know and um, because then when i come to do tuesday's video i might be able to explain things a little bit better to you if you found something that you've that you've struggled on or if there's something that you'd like me to go over again that's completely fine okay so let me know if you find that you'd like practice on drawing um time on clock faces I can always find a worksheet to send to you so please don't worry um, and as always please send in photos of your home learning to the year four email address this is your last Monday of home learning year four so hopefully this time next week you'll all be back in school okay and I'll see you tomorrow bye